Have we reached the Ukraine war's moment of truth? Because according to this week's Time magazine cover story on Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky, Zelensky's inner circle says the war is unwinnable. The article describes Zelensky as delusional for his failure to recognize realities of the battlefield and his unwillingness to consider peace talks with Russia. Now, a new article by entrepreneur David Sachs makes the case that while Time magazine may be on Zelensky's side, Actual time is not. Zelensky himself had this to say on whether the war with Russia has reached a stalemate. I hear you rejecting the characterization by your top general that this is a stalemate. Are you changing strategies, as has been reported? I believe that today, indeed, the situation is difficult. I don't think that this is a stalemate. It's a, it's a check on the, uh, on, the, on the part of the Russian army, but before that we did a lot, we had done a lot, we were in a difficult situation. They thought that they would checkmate us, but this is, didn't happen. Joining us now to discuss is partner at Kraft Ventures and contributor at Responsible Statecraft, David Sachs. David, thank you for joining us. Good to be here. Are we reaching the point that many um, non-interventionist or uh, skeptics of increased and continued and permanent U.S. support to Ukraine, uh, a situation that was long predicted, where Ukraine has no choice but to have a conversation with Russia about what the, the future of, of the contested region will be? Yeah, that's exactly the point that we've reached. Uh, what you've really seen over the past week or so is that the narrative dam around the reality in Ukraine is completely broken and the truth is now pouring out. It started with that Time Magazine article. Like you said, Zelensky's own aides and advisors said that he was delusional for this, uh, what they said, messianic belief in their ultimate victory. Uh, one of his advisors said, we're out of options, we're not winning, but try telling him that. But that wasn't the end of it. Then you had this NBC News story basically saying that the war was deadlocked, it was in a stalemate. But even more than that, officials said that if Ukraine didn't negotiate by the end of the year, uh, the situation would become urgent. You could almost hear the panic in these unnamed officials' voices. Then you had uh, the New York Times just the other day talking about an open rift that's developed between Zelensky and his commander in chief, Zeluzhny. Zeluzhny did an interview with The Economist in which he said the war was a stalemate. Uh, Zelensky disagreed with that uh, in a press conference. And so now the two are openly at odds with each other in the press. So what you see now is that there is no agreement within even the Ukrainian senior leadership between Zelensky and his advisors, between Zelensky and his top general about what's happening in the war. But, but I, I think that now it, the, the truth is broken out, which is that Ukraine is not winning this war. The counteroffensive has been a failure. And if they don't start doing something different, uh, they're headed for disaster. Why do you think that this news is coming out now that we're getting the Time magazine piece now? Certainly circumstances on the ground haven't been Tony for Ukraine for a very long time, if ever. Do you think this is really about the United States making a choice between which of two ongoing wars now it wants to throw its resources behind, and this is all being provoked by the uh, fighting in Gaza? Or do you think it's more being driven by the frustration of people with uh, internal to uh, his own regime, like this general who's been speaking out? To what do you attribute this change in tenor? I think that if Zelensky continues with this strategy of insisting on advances, uh, that there is a great fear on the part of the administration and within his own general corps that Ukraine will collapse. Uh, remember that since the counteroffensive began on June 4th, Ukraine has basically been on the offensive for about five months. They've been hurling their troops and weapons at these fixed Russian fortifications now with huge casualties and huge losses. And the thing that the time uh, profile makes clear is that these orders to advance, this insistence on continuing to be on offense, to make progress of even just a few meters a day is coming directly from the office of the president. And what some of the sources say is that even if the US comes through with more weapons, more ammunition and so on, the Ukrainian army does not have the personnel to use them. They say we don't have the manpower. So I think there's a great fear now that if Zelensky continues with this delusional strategy, 
that the Ukrainian side will collapse. And I think that the Biden administration is very interested in avoiding a situation like that, a collapse like that before the election. So I think they're quite unsure what to do now. And I think you're seeing, again, administration officials uh, now speaking more honestly about the situation because they see the urgency here. Yeah, the Biden administration initially said that we would continue to um, to fund Ukraine's defense essentially forever, for as long as it took. And I, there was even, at times, the mask would slip a little bit and some suggestion of an interest in regime change in Russia, which obviously is a you know, fanciful idea. Um, the Wagner Group effort collapsed. Their leaders were blown up in a plane. Um, well, what do you think the Biden administration is, uh, is 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 thinking now? Is it going to publicly um, repudiate that previous line that it, we were, were just going to give Ukraine whatever it wants for as long as it takes? And there's some more realistic thinking is going to take hold? I, I think it was always very unrealistic for the Biden administration to promise total support indefinitely for Ukraine. And, and Brianna, I think you're right uh, in mentioning the situation in Israel. The United States has other commitments all over the world. Our resources are not infinite. And in fact, even before the situation in Israel exploded, we had the issue of the problem of the U.S. running out of 155 millimeter artillery shells, the key type of ammunition in this war. This is why the Biden administration had to give cluster bombs to Ukraine, even though a year before it had said that cluster bombs were a war crime. So we already were stretched to the limit, uh, amazingly, in Ukraine. This war has really uh, depleted America's stockpiles and its resources to a much greater extent than I think the Biden administration had ever anticipated. Now we have the Israel situation on top of it. So I think tough choices are ahead for the United States, even if we send them another $60 billion, You know, we can always print more money, but you can't just print more ammunition, and at least not anytime soon. So I do think that the administration is faced with tough choices they didn't anticipate, and they never should have made that promise to Zelensky of total support for as long as it takes. And, you know, the tragic thing here is that if the administration had been honest with Zelensky, maybe he would have taken the peace deal that was mm. on offer in the first month of this war. They had a deal at Istanbul worked out. It was initial. There was a draft outline. It simply required Ukraine to give up its desire to join NATO. Had the Ukrainians done that, they would have held on to this uh, east portion of eastern Ukraine. They would have held on to the Donbass, and they wouldn't have had these hundreds of thousands of casualties. So the tragedy here is that if the administration had been more realistic, we could have avoided the tragedy of this war. Yeah, a really, really well-made point there. Thank you so much for joining us today, David. Good to be with you.